Hello and good morning, folks. It's good to be back after a week-long uh, surfing hiatus along the southern coast. I'm Shikhar Garg, your host, and let's get going with Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. Now, to begin, we had the NFP jobs data released for the US on Friday, which were better than the expected numbers, pushing the thought of continued aggression by the central bank. Amongst the market participants, though it is visible quite well in the indices futures uh, being traded out here. No. But uh, is this employment number actually robust for the economy? I mean, uh, it also depends on the participation rates of the labor, right? We'll have to find that out, but it's quite interesting to see how a decoupled action of equities along with the strong equity numbers is leading the slide in equity markets. On the domestic side, we'd see another gap of opening for USD INR, our own currency pair. So PR, I'd like uh, an update from you on our Indian rupee front. Like it continues to slide. What's your take? What should our corporates be looking out for? Uh, thank you, Sikha. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start with the uh, 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 first geopolitical news and then we will move to the uh, markets. Uh, Putin celebrated his 70th birthday. And uh, there was not much fanfare on that because of a war. Uh, the other, in other development, there's a bridge between Russia and Crimea had got uh, you know, somehow fallen off. Uh, people are still finding out the region of that. And it's, it's, it's a very important bridge uh, in a connection with uh, Russia and Crimea. Uh, at the same point of time, looking at the progress of a Russian uh, military action, uh, Russia had fired uh, Eastern commander, uh, a commander of Eastern region and they are changing it. So there are lots of going in Russia, Ukraine itself. Uh, in the other side of the earth is North Korea is continuously testing a uh, missile. They have launched six missiles in, in last 12 days and say that all these tests are being done in a self-defense. Now coming back to uh, rupee, uh, rupee is basically at this point of a time looks like uh, getting into an illiquid market conditions uh, where basically uh, we are not seeing much of an intervention from RBI uh, it seems that post policy are they adopted uh, off uh, offense approach where they are not intervening much and that's that's the reason uh, we have not seen any much of an intervention at rupees 82 uh, today again it's look like uh, no, no, it closed at 82 32 on friday and it seems that the further weakness in the store uh, we might see uh, opening uh, above rupees 82 70 today uh, now, 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 coming to the basic reasons behind uh, what happening in dollar rupee, uh, after the OPEC cut, oil prices jumped 4% to a five-week high on Friday. Now, this OPEC plus cut of a $2 billion, $2 million uh, despite concern about a possible recession and a rising interest rates, it seems that uh, OPEC plus is uh, working along with the Russian uh, guys or Russian intentions that they want to keep the oil uh, price higher, which can help uh, the oil prices of Russia to be capped around in basically Europe and US wants to cap the Russian oil prices and that's the reason uh, the market action seems and that's the reason they have uh, cut the output by two a million per barrel. Then non-farm payroll data came in the Friday evening. Now this uh, data was not very different from what was expected. The expectations was around 2 lakhs 50,000 uh, and the market came at uh, the data came at 2 lakhs 63,000 jobs per uh, for the month of September. <clears throat> now, things to watch is basically unemployment rate fell from 3.7 to 3.5%. The market is aggressively looking at uh, pivoting in, uh, indicators from US and that's not happening. And that's the reason we have seen a deep cuts in Euro and GBP. Euro is trading around 0 0.9750, GBP is around 1.107080. Uh, the other important currency uh, is dollar yen. We have seen a dollar yen uh, intervention last time is at 145.90. Today we are dealing at 145.40. Now this this is the area we have to see whether uh, Japanese intervention happens or do not happen. If Japanese intervention happen aggressively, it can help uh, uh, emerging market currency for some time. Uh, post NFP data, we have seen a significant fall in. Uh, emerging market currencies and emerging market stock index and even the u.s stock index in the u.s indices were down from two percent to four percent emerging, <coughs> emerging market indices fell by 1.6 percent the, uh, the stronger dollar has taken its toll on gold also gold dropped below uh, 1700 per ounce now important to watch whether they, it breaks below 1680 if it's 
break because, uh, below 1680, then the resumption of a downtrend will again uh, resume. China market uh, after a week holiday will be opening today, and USD CNH as of now dealing at 7.1212. And uh, an important indicator there would be that whether Chinese intervention also happen in uh, in the currency market to take control of their uh, currency. I would I would say that USD had not found the uh, appropriate catalyst for peaking as of now, and that's the reason emerging market FX will have a, a few you know, obstacles, and they they will have a continued uh, depreciation pressure. On the domestic front, uh, Indian tax revenues continue to register very strong growth. Uh, they, you know, for the this current financial year, the number has come 23.8% higher to, point, uh, to basically 8.98 lakh crores. And that's a, a good amount of a tax collection, a tax collection happening. Uh, Indian other indicators, which we, market indicators, which we look at, Indian 10 year yield closed at 746. Uh, and USD and are closed at all time highs 8232. I, I think that today market will be taking a range between 80 to 40 or 80 to 95. That's the range we are expecting today. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, wonderful uh, PR. And uh, that's quite interesting to see. I mean, uh, the Indian domestic uh, macros continue to stay good, uh, even though a lot of uh, turmoil uh, is visible. We definitely will face some global brand, but at the same time, the domestic performance, like you mentioned, uh, the uh, tax collections is quite good, as well as we've seen quite a bit of an investment from the FPIs in the real estate side. So uh, it seems people are positive on the uh, domestic macros, but what is still looking on the currency front is some sort of a catalyst which can state that there are signs of a dollar peaking out and probably uh, there is some relief for the emerging as well as the major uh, currencies as against the dollar. One of the uh, uh, pivotal points can be uh, visible when it comes to the Japanese intervention, as you mentioned, uh, it was somewhere nearby and it needs to be seen whether the Japanese central bank will continue to intervene at these levels to maintain the currency uh, depreciation. At the same time, one, one interesting bit was the fact that OPEC continues to cut the output, uh, uh, pushing the oil prices further higher. And uh, there's some sort of a different ball game altogether going on. And uh, it's something difficult to understand right now. But oil prices have been moving higher near five week high now. Uh, folks, uh, can it can continue to be a cause of concern. But uh, what we are seeing is geopolitics continue to run at par with the macro factors like inflation and rate hikes uh, in the current uh, set of global news and updates. So things continue to be a lot uncertain with the kind of uh, updates that we are receiving on a regular basis. But what we are definitely seeing is we'll come up again tomorrow with the new round of updates and continue bringing you all these sorts of information that is required to move around. Uh, that's it for today, folks. We'll come back again tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening.